In 2017, Daniel Bryan continually set the world on fire by saying on the now dead talking smack that he was going to return to wrestling one day. It raised everyone's eyebrows because he had been forced into retirement at this stage, but seeing him be so adamant about it, and be so adamant about it when talking to The Miz was riveting. It made you believe and gave you a look into what was going on behind the scenes. As we now know, Brian 100% meant it and we got to see most of this journey play out live, even though it was anything but a WWE planned story. It was just how life was rocking and rolling. It's not the first time reality has gotten someone onto wrestling television either, and it's been proven time and time again that when we do do it, it can be beyond captivating and sometimes really stupid. I'm Simon from What Culture. Remember to subscribe. This is 10 real life dramas that made it to TV. Number 10 Stone Cold Melts Down. Steve Austin's heel turn in 2001 was brilliant. It revealed just how creative he could be as a performer, and seeing him unravel on TV every week as a paranoid, fragile champion was a joy to watch. Unfortunately, the mass audience just didn't want to see this version of the rattlesnake, and they stopped watching. Austin was then soon back to being a face once the botched invasion angle was out the way, and he was flipping and swearing. Behind the scenes, though, this wasn't too far away from how the man behind the waistcoat felt. In 2002, his personal relationships, both at work and away from the office were breaking down, and eventually Austin would walk away from the WWE entirely after being told he had to lose to Brock Lesnar. Even that was rumored to be some kind of punishment given how difficult Stone Cold had become, often saying publicly he wasn't a fan of the product. A year later he was retired, and Austin was the first to say that all of this and leaving it behind took a good year to get it out of his system. It's one of the prices of being the top guy and riding so high and so fast, eventually you're gonna crash. Number 9. Jeff Hardy's House Fire When Jeff Hardy finally reached the top of the mountain in 2008 as he became the WWE World Champion, he was soon put into a feud the following year with brother Matt. The future broken one was then keen to admit he tried to run Jeff off the road and burn him alive by messing with his pyrotechnics. It was all very dark stuff, and WWE kept this going when they brought in a slab of reality. Back in March the year prior, Jeff had been suspended after violating the wellness policy, a bad time that doubled when his house also burned down, killing his dog Jack. Deciding this would be the perfect way to underline how awful Matt was, the elder sibling was told to go out in front of the masses and say he was responsible for all this and that he was damn proud. So yes, he basically wanted to murder his bro. Why he wasn't arrested on site, we will never know, but for anyone that thought this sounded a little too real, it's because it was. Jeff's house actually did burn down and he did lose his dog. I imagine Jeff suffered quite a lot having to go through that, but hey, it was a good story. So on to Raw and SmackDown it went. Number 8. Taking a shot at Scott Most wrestling fans know the difficulties faced by Scott Hall. It unfortunately became a very sad ongoing saga throughout the years, and there were times when even his friends said he was on the cusp. Thankfully DDP flew in and saved his life, but that wasn't always the way. Back in 2007, for example, Hall was booked for TNA's Turning Point main event. These issues would rear their head, meaning he didn't show up, which triggered a proper rant from Samoa Joe that fans were all over the next day. As it turned out, so was WWE. On Raw that night, Mr. Kennedy was in the middle of a feud with Shawn Michaels and fancied winding him up by bringing out fake versions of people that had been important in HBK's past. One was a Razor Ramon impersonator, and as soon as he was done, Kennedy casually threw in a, oh, thanks for coming, by the way, which was a direct jam to the events that had gone down the previous night. It was pretty obvious, and everybody got involved in it too, and before long, that was also making news. Was this unnecessary? Probably. Number 7. Woman Trouble Kevin Sullivan was accused of booking his own divorce after a 1996 storyline that he came up with where his wife Nancy went off with Chris Benoit and soon went from fantasy to reality. Representing two warring factions, that being the Four Horsemen and the Dungeon of Doom, Benoit and Sullivan fought for over a year on TV, and to light a fire under that at one point, Chris and Nancy started having an affair. In order to make this as real as possible, Kevin said the two had to be together in public as much as they could, and that led to real love blossoming and Sullivan getting screwed over. It was a pretty big deal in the locker room, and almost as soon as their divorce went through, Chris and Nancy were engaged. The feud ended in 1997 when Chris beat Kevin at the Great American Bash, and surely Sullivan must regret all of this for more than the obvious. There was also a reason as to why Benoit left WC Derby. Already wanting out, the decision was made even easier when Kevin became head booker. That wasn't something Chris wanted to go through because, as you can imagine, Kevin hated him, so off he went to the WWE. 
To be honest, this was too real. Number six, multiple violations. Off the back of that entry, the horrendous tragedy that ended Chris Benoit's life shocked WWE into action, where any obvious problems behind the scenes were quickly jumped on. The wellness policy became a code of conduct that everyone had to adhere to, which is why 60 superstars plus have been hit with a violation in over a decade of testing. In August 2007 alone, 12 names were caught out. Surely fueled forward by the awful murder-suicide, the signature pharmacy scandal was headline news that summer as existing clients were named as Batista. Edge, King Booker, Chris Masters, Randy Orton, Umaga, William Regal, Mr. Kennedy, John Morrison, Gregory Helms, Funaki, Chavo Guerrero, and others, as well as the deceased Benoit and Guerrero following a police raid. There was multiple suspensions throughout the roster as countless storylines just stopped, as wrestlers had to leave TV for 30 or 60 days depending on their history. It was a horrible time to be a fan, if we're honest, and seeing it affect the shows in such a serious way underlined how bad the problem was. Number 5. Matt Lita and Edge this exploded when it broke and even made its way to some people that didn't even like wrestling. But in 2005, the breakup of Matt Hardy and Lita was made way too public when it turned out the reason for the split was because Lita had been having an affair with Hardy's best friend, Edge. This was more soap opera than WWE. Ever since Matt had asked to be moved to Raw so he could travel with his longtime partner, it was quite well known what was going on, especially as this ended his version 1 gimmick which was gaining some momentum on SmackDown. Instead, he got lost on the so-called A-show even if he was now closer to his current love. Finding himself injured in 2004, Hardy was forced to take time off, and during this period, Lita began to travel with Edge, which led to all the madness we've touched upon. Lisa Ortiz, who was married to the rated R superstar, discovered this, swiftly let Matt know, and he was so angry he broke the story online. The result of that was him getting released from the company. This was just adding smoke to the fire as fans everywhere were chanting, you screwed Matt at every show possible, which eventually saw him rehired and of course put in a feud with Edge and Lita. How they all did that, I'll never know. It ended when Edge banished Matt back to SmackDown, ending a horrible two years for the future broken one. Imagine having to go through all of that and then it being used as a narrative. Crazy, crazy times. Number 4. Double Booking Vince McMahon can be petty. I mean, we all can, but when Vince does it, it becomes news, and that's what happened in 2009 when he had to move an episode of Raw from the home of the Denver Nuggets to the Staples Center because of the Nuggets needing it for the NBA playoffs. They never actually thought they were going to compete in it, and hilariously, McMahon tried to get them to move, but when that didn't happen, he accepted his fate kind of. Realizing he had a live show where he could retaliate, Vinnie Mac just marched out on that Monday night and had a match against an impersonator of Nugget owner Stan Kroenke and ensured the commentators took the mick throughout it. McMahon did that too with a promo beforehand, and part of this was him yelling that when you push the WWE Universe, they push back. Vince also booked a 10-man tag team main event where all the heels wore Nugget jerseys and the faces were wearing LA Lakers gear because of course. The would-be Lakers then kicked their opponent's ass and I'm sure Vince was very proud of himself for at least a week. Number 3. Daniel Bryan Watching Daniel Bryan suffer physically towards what at the time seemed like the end of his career was horrible. He had been the biggest star in the world and then found himself fighting his own body that had started to give out on him. One of the most famous moments like this was in June 2018 when Triple H straight up stopped a Raw match against Randy Orton after Bryan suffered a stinger. Daniel reportedly went nuts at the game afterwards, including making the point that if anyone was going to carry on through injuries it would have been Hunter, but that made no difference. Two years later, doctors would be telling Brian after some time out the ring that they wouldn't clear him to compete, which led to one of the most emotional retirement promos we've ever seen. Couldn't help but feel for the guy. The fact it happened to go down in his hometown just added to the very real nature of it all. This wasn't even over because another two years on from this, we were almost going in the opposite direction. After 24 months of putting himself through every test imaginable, Daniel was able to get the green light and boy howdy did that make even the most hardened fan react. It's like we had suffered through all of this with the yes man himself and the fact he was able to make this return was too good to be true. As awful as it was at the time, the fact it did have this happy ending underlined that when what you're seeing is legit, you can't help but buy in hook, line, and sinker. I love you, Daniel Bryan. Number 2. Sean vs. Brett The hate that existed between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels arguably damaged both guys long term, despite them being two of the greatest performers ever. It also stopped them from having a series of legendary wrestling matches which really should have gone down. When they were at their peaks, this mistrust hijacked both their Iron Match encounter at WrestleMania 12 and their last clash at Survivor Series 1997. On the flip side of this was that when they clashed outside the ring, it was so fascinating it made for compelling viewing. 
Despite all their problems, both allowed the other to cut quite close to the bone when they had a microphone in hand. And my word, did they go all in with that. The hitman took shots at HBK's decision to pose for Playgirl, and we all know about that Sunny Days comment. Both even threw their earnings at one another, because nothing was off the table. Even if you watch it now, you can feel the tension and hatred, and that's because it wasn't fake. They likely wanted to just smack the other one in the face on numerous occasions, but didn't, because they knew that's not how wrestling worked. That fell out the window in late 97, of course, but still, go check these out. It is absolutely mad. Number 1. Pepper Some of the best so bad it's good content from the Attitude Era. When the big boss man invited Al Snow to dinner to end their feud, you knew something wasn't right. Before all this, boss man had kidnapped Pepper, who was Al Snow's dog. And while this steak dinner was meant to be an apology, it turned out to be the end of the crime or the start of a new one depending how you want to see it. For you see, in 1999, this was only going to end one way, and that was the fact the former police officer had just fed Al's dog to him disguised as a meal. So that's murder from a straight up psychopath. It was kind of funny, although utterly screwed up, but like many things in wrestling, it was based on an actual happening. Mythical tales of Mr. Fuji's crazy life before entering the industry were often shared around backstage, and one of these was that he did just this to a neighbor's pup after its barking kept him up. If we take that as read, I think we can agree that we should never piss Fuji off, because my word, no wonder he was so good as a heel manager, he genuinely did not care. Know of any other real life wrestling dramas that made it to TV? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles and follow WhatCulture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. My name is Simon from WhatCulture and I will talk to you again soon.